good old shrimp cocktail. Yeah, buddy! Good job! It's been 20 minutes since you've been fishing, but I know you're just kind of like every other cast chilling. This fish looks a little colored up. I think we're going to go ahead and uh, possibly let this one go. That's a good little, little nookie, but it's a little one. Nice shout out to Mike at Oregon Rod and Reel. Always getting us with some fresh bait. Thank you kindly, sir. You know what? We're going to go ahead and uh, sometimes on these upper river Chinook, you can go ahead and check the gill plate sometimes where that skin is translucent and you can almost see the quality of that meat. This fish is actually pretty nice. I'm going to go ahead and tag it and uh, give this to some family and friends. Thanks for tuning into the bite. I'm Jonathan. We'll be back soon. Welcome back YouTube, thanks for tuning in. Just got ourselves a Spring Chinook, mid-July. I'm gonna go ahead and take you through what I used to help me catch some fish today. So realistically, you can go ahead and throw some eggs, you can throw some lures, you can drift fish corkies and yarn with scents that are gonna go ahead and attract these fish. Personally, I like to use eggs. I'm a bobber fisherman, it's just what I like. I'm going to go ahead and show you guys today how to wrap up a version of the shrimp cocktail. These are some eggs I ended up acquiring from a fish that I got the other day. Just good old Potsky's fire cure, making sure to massage that cure. Deep into those berries. That way you have a nice firm skein that stays on the hook. Not as big a berry as I wish, but what can you do? Caught me my fish, we'll go ahead and see if we can get another one. Here in the background you do see I like to run Pro Cure. These salmon are really keying in on scents. They are still a little bit fresh here in the water, so I like the Bloody Tuna Sand Shrimp Oil, Water Soluble Bloody Tuna, as well as the Bloody Tuna Super Gel super gel I do like for my lures. So today we're going to go ahead and uh, use ourselves a nice 4 out sickle bait loop. <clears throat> so if you ever find yourself with a uh, skein of eggs that are a little bit soft, a little bit falling apart, something not to your liking, um, these are some beautiful berries, 
I personally like them a little bit soft as far as the bite goes. They're horrible for holding on to your eggs, but I will show you how to go ahead and put those on. So you're gonna go ahead and notice that you've got your skein side and you've got your berry side. Now this is a nice tough set of eggs and those are gonna stay on. But if you do have something that's not as tough and a little bit more fragile, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna fold that skein skin to skin side down, which is gonna allow you to go ahead and get the best chunk. Looks like this gentleman here behind me has a nice chrome fish on. <clears throat> so, wrapping that skein up a couple of times, wrapping that bait loop over, just allowing you to uh, get a good cinch up on those eggs. So with my sand shrimp, some people like to cut the claws off, some people don't. Personally, when I'm hooking a live sand shrimp on my hook, I don't want them pinching me. So I'm gonna go ahead and give myself a little slack in the back. Again, this is just one way to rig up a shrimp cocktail. There are plenty of ways to do it. I personally like head down at the bottom. And for that reasoning is, I notice when I tend to cast and I throw the head up at top, you have a lot more drag when you're fishing heavier holes and that head tends to rip off. Whereas if you throw it underneath, you can wrap it inside the hook. Give yourself a little bit more of that shrimp on the bait. I'm gonna go ahead and lightly pull that uh, tail down making sure not to break that shrimp tail off, just enough to cinch it down. Then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take some of my magic thread. <clears throat> you can see I've got the end of my shank here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pinch that magic thread down on top of that eyelet. And what I wanna do is I wanna get a couple wraps around that eyelet, making sure as I've got something attached to that hook. That way, when I go ahead and wrap my shrimp on and my eggs on, should my eggs slide down my hook, my shrimp and the whole thing don't go and follow it. I have something keeping it on the actual hook itself. I'm gonna go ahead and lightly wrap that, making sure again not to destroy that shrimp. Oh, that's nice. So I fish a little bit heavier water, really takes a toll on your bait. This magic thread, I really do like to use quite a bit of it if I need to. Softer eggs, this stuff works great. Again, you don't have to pull very hard. And then I'll wrap it all the way back up, bring it back to the shank. And again, you've got that attached to the hook itself and not on the shank, whereas it can slide down. And sometimes it will, your whole piece of bait will slide down and fall off. So, that's a shrimp cocktail. You can go ahead and put your oils, scents, whatever you feel you need. Toss it out, see if you find another fish. Good morning, YouTube. Welcome to another edition of The Bite. The man of the hour, finding himself with some bait. Hey guys! Found a metal straw on the ground, that's pretty cool. Save, save the 
sea turtles, right? Right now we are currently looking for some spring Chinook. We got Asher down river. Right now the only thing biting are these bugs. And let me tell you, they are vicious. Stay tuned. See if we can find you some fish. How are those bugs treating you, Tanner? 100 pounds of bugs. Off spray. When you want them off, you get them off. Still in search of that fish. We got Asher over here. Yeah, yeah. Bob are fishing for some springers. Fishing for boots. Hey guys, I'm out here shopping for boots. Found a hole in his. Yeah, there's a hole in my boots, so I gotta get some new ones. Jonathan's on a fish. Looks like a decent fish too, huh? Looks like it's a little wrapped up. It looks bright though. Do you see how bright it just looked? It's a little wrapped up. wrapped up. Welcome back to the bite. It's roughly noon o'clock. Hey guys. Welcome back to another episode of We Got Skunk Shopping for Boots. Jonathan caught a fish this morning. So... I guess it wasn't a We Got Skunk, it was just a welcome to another episode of Asher Get Skunk. Does that be my new YouTube channel? It'd be so much easier for me to produce a channel that was just called Asher Get Skunked than it was like trying to catch fish. As long as I like go out to the river and it's like go on an adventure, another adventure of Asher Get Skunked. You guys can be sure I'm going to go somewhere cool where there's like fish getting caught and people doing cool things. But I'm gonna get skunked. I put in probably like, I don't know, eight, eight full days of fishing in the last month that didn't produce any decent fish. You know, I caught a nice little trout, legal fish today. Caught a couple the other day also. But I probably put in probably like five striper sessions with no significant fish. Put in, uh, this is maybe my fourth salmon session here with no fish at all. That's insane. 
That's insane. Why do I even keep coming back? This right here should be me. right here from where it's been lit before but look at the beautiful red band down the side of that fish oh, oh, brother. look at the gorgeous beautiful red band down the side of that fish Yeah, that fish was like, like atrophy. He came streaking in for it. I saw him actually come running in for it even. Oh, I didn't know. No, I don't think he was just sitting there. I think he came chasing you over from... I've never seen him come that far in. Yep. Yeah, buddy. It's a pretty looking fish. Dude, that was such a crazy bite. Nice little limit. 
I took a, took a couple of trips, but I finally got my Springer. Oh, it's a dirty fish. I'm gonna clean this fish off real quick. Give me one second. Well, you guys, I finally got my Springer. Took a couple of trips up here, and I don't think that we got any of the fight on uh, film. Batteries were running low, but, um, Beautiful, beautiful spring Chinook. I'm super stoked. Um, these fish look a little dark, but the truth is that they've been upriver and they spent a lot of time in the sun. And so they get this dark color on them, but it's gonna have really beautiful pink fillets in it still. And um, that's a great salmon for the smoker, if nothing else. But I think that this is gonna be fillets in the freezer. So, woo -wee! Jonathan put me on the fish. He put us on the fish the other morning. He limited out today, so maybe I can't get another one and uh, we'll call it a double limit, but I'm real happy on that. That's a beautiful fish, maybe, I don't know, somewhere in the 10 pound range, give or take a few pounds, but yeah, way to shake a skunk, right? What is up, all of my YouTube party people? How you guys doing? It is a beautiful sunny afternoon here in Oregon. I'm down here on the river trying to smash fish. It's been a really slow day. Um, got here at about 4 a.m., met up with two friends a little bit down river, then came to this hole, met up with three friends here. Nobody had stuck any fish. Went and checked out a rock a little ways away from here where there was a bunch of guys fishing. Nobody had stuck any fish. Came back to this hole, worked it out for maybe another hour or two. Nobody caught any fish. Then, um, right when we were about to give up, Jonathan stuck one. Bam, give it another hour, Jonathan sticks another one. Right, real close, like right up here close. So like, whoa, where that fish came from? It was just in two feet of water. So um, we were like, well, might as well hang out for a little bit. I put a bobber and eggs back on, stuck my bobber and eggs out there. First cast, snagged up, snapped off. I was like, this is just not my fishing day. So I threw this little purple spinner on, my real light line, this little 12 pound test uh, spinning rod I got, might even be less, might be eight pound test spinning rod that I got. Stuck that out there in the water, boom, salmon on. It's purple spinner, tucking hardware, it's always a good feeling. So um, shout out to uh, Jonathan for putting us on the hole again. Shout out to Tobiah for lending me some eggs and for meeting me at the river this morning. Shout out to Tanner for being Tanner. Uh, shout out to my partner, Chris Blanchard, who couldn't make it here today. I'm Asher Wren. You're watching the bike.